Hey folks. So as promised, I wanted to do a few more examples using the different comparison tests to test for convergence and divergence of a series. And so we're gonna really focus on direct comparison and limit comparison. So what I did is I, I grabbed you know three questions from the textbook and I try not to think about it too hard as usual, just so you get a really authentic experience of you know my thought process of how I'm choosing what test to do um, and so yeah, let's let's dive right in. So first series, um, I'm adding four to the n plus one over three to the n minus two. So immediately when I look at this, the thing that sticks out is sort of like the four to the n over three to the n looking piece. And so you know, if I had to guess, this I would say this kind of looks like four over three to the n. And this is a geometric series, but the R, the four over three, is bigger than one, which would mean this diverges. And so, you know, this is just my intuition, right? This is four thirds for R, which would make this a divergent series. So when I look at the series we're given, my intuition tells me this probably diverges. Um, but how am I going to prove that? Well, I can either use direct comparison or limit comparison. And so... Uh, I want to try direct comparison first because, you know, it's nice if that one works. So um, if I want to prove that this series diverges, what I want to do is try to simplify my sequence, right, my sum terms. Um, I want to simplify them and by making them smaller and smaller, right? I want to say this is bigger than something, something, something until I get down to something that kind of looks like the, you know, four over three to the N geometric series, right? I want to make this simpler to a series I could easily say converges or diverges. Well, in this case, make it something simpler that diverges. Okay, so what's this bigger than? Well, this is bigger than um, four to the N plus one. Let me leave that for now. Um, so I can make this whole fraction smaller if I make the denominator bigger. So instead of three n three to the n minus two, if I make that just three to the n, so if I add two to the denominator, right? So in my head, I'm sort of doing add two to the denominator. I've made the whole denominator bigger, making the fraction smaller, which means, okay, this inequality is true. Um, oh, and this is good, right? Because now what can I say? Well, this is equal to four. I have to take out the one four, and then I have four to the n over three to the n, which is four times four over three to the n. Okay, and this is pretty much good enough for me. Um, now, by direct comparison, I can say, so by direct comparison, we now have the series we are studying right, four to the n plus one over three n minus, oh, minus two, must be bigger than the sum of four times four over three to the n. But as we said before, this is a geometric series. With r equals four thirds, which diverges. So we conclude our series also diverges. Okay, so this is a nice one. I could use direct comparison because it was relatively easy, right, to get from our sequence of terms, right, the, the terms in our series go down to simpler things, right, so I made them smaller to other things that were easier to deal with, right? Um, you probably could have used limit comparison here, but I got away with direct comparison. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, n sine of n over one plus n cubed. Okay, um, you know what though? I, I will tell you what, as soon as I see this n sine of n term, um, I'm not liking limit comparison as much because, you know, for limit comparison, I might have to divide stuff and try to take limits. And that seems a little bit sketchy with that sign term. Um, so I'm going to guess this is direct comparison. And so let me let me sort of think about what I see here, right? So what I see here is an n over n cubed. And then, okay, the sign of n term goes between one and minus one. So like, I mean, I'm just going to ignore it, I guess. Um, and say that overall, this kind of kind of looks like 
n over n cubed, which would give me a one over n squared overall. Um, okay, so if that's the case, my guess would be converge. And so let's see if we can do direct comparison on this series to see that this converges. So to get something converging, Okay, if I'm going to use direct comparison, what I want to do is the opposite of what I just did. I want to say this is less than or equal to, right? This is less than or equal to some simpler thing, probably like this one over n squared looking thing. Okay, so what is n sine of n over one plus n cubed less than? Okay, so first of all, right, I know the sine function is always less than one, right? If I plot the sine function, I know its values are always smaller than or equal to one. And so I can replace sine of n with a one and make the whole expression bigger. Okay. This has a little bit of that squeeze theorem sort of vibe going on here, right? Okay, what else can I do to make this expression bigger? I can make this whole expression bigger if I make the denominator smaller, right? I make the whole expression bigger. And so if I remove the one plus, right, and just leave the n cubed on the denominator. So if I have just n over n cubed, I've made the denominator smaller, making the entire quotient larger overall. And guess what? I've now landed on one over n squared, which was what I was hoping for, right? Something that's easy to talk about. This is a p-series now. And so now I can say by my direct comparison test, by direct comparison, we now see that the series we are studying, n sine of n over one plus n cubed, must be smaller than the sum of one over n squared. And now, like we said before, this series converges, it's a p series with p equals two. Then we conclude that our series which is smaller than that, must also converge. Hey, that worked out really nicely. All right, one more. Okay, sum of n squared plus n plus one over n to the fourth plus n squared. Okay, lots going on here. Um, I'm gonna try this one using limit comparison, why? Well, trying to delete all these terms one by one seems a little bit more annoying, and we haven't used limit comparison to try anything yet, so let's go ahead and do it. So um, what I'm seeing to leading order, right, I have this n squared over n to the fourth, and so this kind of looks like, right, so it kind of looks like n squared over n to the fourth, which is one over n squared. And so if I were studying this series sum of one over n squared, I would expect convergence because of p series. And so, okay, I'm gonna guess our series converges too, but let's use limit comparison to be very sure. So what we have for limit comparison is we have this original sequence of terms, n squared plus n plus one over n to the fourth plus n squared. And I'm gonna compare that to my series or my sequence um, which is n squared over n to the fourth, which of course you could think about as one over n squared. But what I'm doing from my comparison sequence is I'm just taking the highest power on the numerator divided by the highest power on the denominator. Okay, now let's compute the limit L, which is defined as the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n. All right, what do we get? We get n squared plus n plus one over n to the fourth plus n squared. Now that's my a n, all of this is divided by b n. So that's n squared over n to the fourth. Oops, I dropped my limit. Okay. Now what does this equal? So now this equals the limit as n goes to infinity. Now remember, I wanna sort of group these terms together and I wanna group these terms together to get something like this. So I'm gonna have n squared plus n plus one over n to the fourth plus n squared times. Now I'm gonna rewrite my sort of reciprocal problem like this. So one over n squared divided by 
1 over n to the fourth. Now, this is the limit as n goes to infinity. If I start distributing, right, distributing stuff here, I'm going to get what? I'm going to get 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 over n squared divided by, now let me pass to this lower piece. What am I going to get? I'm going to get n to the fourth over n to the fourth. That's 1 plus uh, 1 over n squared. And hey, look at this. When I go to plug in n tending towards infinity, this cancels, this cancels, this cancels. I'm left with just the number 1. OK, now for limit comparison test, this is brilliant, right? For limit comparison test, all we need is that the limit L we get is some number that's not zero, it's not infinity, but we got a number strictly between the two. So one totally works. And what is the point, right? Once I get that L that's strictly between zero and infinity, we conclude that the series of ANs and the series of BNs, well, they're, they roughly are the same, that either both converge or they both diverge. So in this case, since this limit L is one, that's good. We conclude, um, well, yeah, let's say we conclude that one over n squared, that's my sum of bn's, and the series we're studying, so that's the complicated n squared plus n plus one over n to the fourth plus n squared. So these either both converge or they both diverge. Well, in our case, we know one over n squared as a series converges. Again, this is a p series with p equals two. So our series, the original problem, must also converge and we're done. Okay, so I guess as an interesting challenge, I recommend you try to think about how might I prove this using the direct comparison test? It's certainly possible. It requires a little bit more cleverness, but you know, I think limit comparison was probably the easiest way to go here. Okay, if you have questions, let me know. I hope these examples were helpful. And whatever questions you have, come talk to me in office hours.